Well, do you know, when I woke up this morning and turned on the Today programme, I felt like I was sort of listening to a rewind of a tape from 2010 and you had BBC correspondents saying Britain's returning to a sort of George Orwell world of the road to Wigan Pier. I mean, that is just such nonsense. And I would have thought the BBC had learnt from the last four years that its totally hyperbolic coverage of spending cuts has not been... Hello much and welcome to another week of From Piccadilly to Wigan Pier. Now this week we are doing George Orwell's The Road to Wigan Pier, which very much offers the classic view of life in depressed northern industrial districts in the 1930s. And it's also um, a haunting vision of Britain during the Depression, which um, still has a lot of relevance to the present day. So we began this video with George Osborne, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, talking on the Today programme in 2014. And he was criticising the BBC's coverage of coalition um, spending cuts by claiming that it was claiming that life um, under the coalition in 2014 was like um, the depiction of life in the 1930s in George Orwell's The Rose of Wigan Pier. So this is still a very evocative and controversial book to the present day. Now, George Osborne and George Orwell both went to Eton, um, but they had very different career paths after that. So Orwell joins the um, Burmese police, but then um, focuses on social investigation and writing novels. So he comes to prominence um, as the author of Down and Out in Paris and London, which appeared in 1933, and depicted casual labour in those cities. Um, Orwell posed as a tramp. Um, to write that book. And The Road to Wigan Pier um, very much is in the same um, kind of um, history of social investigation and it's a book which is commissioned by Victor Golantz, um, a left-wing socialist pub publishing firm and it's Orwell's biggest seller in the pre-war years. So Golantz um, is famous for publishing a series of books under the left book club imprint and the 1930s is a time in which paperback publishing really takes off, um, most famously um, in the case of Penguin, who also publishes a number of uh, political books under its Penguin Special series. And Wigan Pier is something of an unusual book in that it's very much split into two halves. So the first half focuses on working class um, social conditions in northern industrial districts, so Orwell visits Lancashire and Yorkshire to write the book and the latter half is very much focused more on the problems of English socialism particularly uh, the ways in which it's depicted by um, middle class intellectuals and it's a rush, rush publication as well because George Orwell um, by the time that the book is published has joined the International Brigade which fights on the Republican side against Franco in the Spanish Civil War so the passage that I've asked you to read comes at the end of the first part of the book. And I think if you're interested in writing about it, I think it's worth thinking about how Orwell is responding to the views of 1930s Britain produced by some of the other writers that we're looking at in this course. Now, just a bit of um, background. Um, Orwell is commissioned to write this book in 1936. So this is a year after the election victory of the conservative dominated national government. So I think it's worth thinking about how Orwell depicts class divisions in Britain at this time and particularly the living conditions of the urban poor and how this is presented in other forms of media um, and in official records at this time. Now personally I think Orwell is one of the greatest English writers of the 20th century so I'm sure this will be a very enjoyable piece for you to look at and I'd also recommend looking at some of Orwell's essays which are perhaps less known but often very funny and entertaining.